when you're using a Jacobs chuck for drilling, it's very convenient to be able to wind it back and pop the chuck out just like that and remove it. However, there is a problem with this you've probably come across. Now, if you look at the calibrations as you wind the quill back in, you'll find that it pops out about two millimeters before the end of the scale. And that means you can't use those, those two millimeters for measuring a drilling hole because the chuck has already popped out at that point. And that's a bit of a nuisance and uh, some, sometimes it's as much as a centimetre out or a half an inch out. So what do you do about that? That's what we're talking about today very briefly. Here's another tool that I place in the tailstock. And this one fortunately has a thread on the end of the Morse taper with a screw in there and I've adjusted that screw so that it pops out at a convenient point. So I put that in and we'll wind it back. We'll find that it pops out just after the zero point. So in order to correct the, uh, the Jacobs chuck, I need to grind a little bit off the tang at the end. Now I read that that tang is used to stop the drill from spinning around, but that only applies when it's used in a drill stand. It does not apply to the tailstock and the boxwood lathe, at least. So I'm not going to do any harm by taking a little bit off. The question now is, how much do I need to take off? I'll make a mark on the horse taper with a felt tip pen. Put it in the chuck and see how far it goes in. I'm going to scribe a line across that felt tip mark. So that's my reference point for the beginning of the quill. So the next thing I need to do is measure it. Reset to zero and we'll measure how long this is. 71.22 millimeters, near enough to 2.8 inches. Actually the inch measurements is probably appropriate since this is an imperial machine. So that's how long we need our Jacob's chuck to be in order to pop out right on a zero mark. So now I'll take the Jacob's chuck and do the same thing. Pop it in, make a felt tip mark, scribe it, and measure how long that is. And uh, so take it to the grinder and remove that extra length. Now you can see the calibrations on here, I hope, with this light. It doesn't want to light a little bit. So now when I wind back, it goes right up to zero without any problem. And just past the zero mark, it pops out. So that's where I want it. Could perhaps have taken a little bit more off, but I did already take a little extra to make sure that it got past the zero before it popped out. Okay, so that's for the um, Jacob's chuck. I do have some other things that I put in the tailstock. This is my collection of tools that I use in the tailstock. My swing arm so I can swing it out if I need to. And uh, these are just uh, Allen keys here. I've got a couple of dead centers. And some people have been having trouble with dead centers not popping out. But this one, these two that I have, let's look. Pop it in. And it pops out just as we get to the end of the travel of the, of the quill. So it's just the right length. And this other one, this is another dead center I've got. Same thing, but just be well past the zero mark on the calibrations, it pops out. So they're okay, but some people have had to clean and uh, glue a washer on the end of here to give it just enough extra push to push it out. Some people don't like that idea in case the washer comes off, but apparently people have done it, so it works fine. Now, of course, I have these two dead centers, and um, they're actually the right length. But if we have one that uh, is too short, you could perhaps uh, drill a hole in the end and put a screw in the end of it. And one of these, this one is quite soft when you file it. The other one is rock hard. You can hear the difference. So this one you probably can't machine, but this one you could easily drill a hole in there and tap it and put a screw in the end so that it's 
rather like the uh, live center that we have. And another problem I have is with uh, with these drills, and I very rarely use this, these type of old drills, but some, tough, some of the very large drills go directly in the Morse taper, like so, and this one doesn't pop out. So I have to, if it wants it's really locked in there, I have to tap it with a hammer. And again, it may be possible to modify this. I could potentially uh, use the same system as the screw that fits in the end, the lock nut, uh, and put that in the end of the end of the drill. But then I won't be able to put this parallel part in my uh, hand drill if I ever need to do that. Another way would be to cut a thread on the outside of here and put a long nut on it on the outside rather than drilling a, a thread on the inside. Could do it either way. Okay, so let's do the same process with this drill. I'll put a black mark on there, put it in the quill, use my scribe to put a mark on there where it just enters the end of the quill, remove it and measure it. And we find it's only 58 millimeters long and the um, live center that was working so well is at least a centimetre longer at about 70 to 71 millimetres so that would mean adding 13 millimetres onto this drill and I don't think that's very practical so I'm just going to put, put up with that one and the way I get those out is uh, to use a small hammer if it's jammed in really tight I just tap it gently and it'll pop out 99% of the time anyway Hi, well I just finished recording this when I realized that I missed something pretty obvious and that is that if it pops out on the two millimeter mark the tank needs two millimeters taken off it it didn't need to be measured but in fact the measurement might be useful for people who have devices that are too short and they want to know how much it might need to be extended to get it to pop out normally so I decided to go ahead and produce the video